Bali is the most famous island in Indonesia, known for its stunning mountain scenery, tropical beaches, and the Balinese people, some of the friendliest folks you'll ever meet. Not surprisingly, Bali has become one of the most sought-after tourist destinations in the world. So stay tuned and don't go away, because we're revealing fun facts about Bali, Indonesia. First up, where does the world's most expensive coffee in the world come from? You guessed it, Bali, Indonesia. It's called Kopi Luwak, and let's just say it's not your typical coffee bean. Some of you may have first heard of Kopi Luwak mentioned by Jack Nicholson in the film The Bucket List. Toward the end of the film, Morgan Freeman's character explains to Nicholson's character that the beans for the costly yet delicious coffee come from the digested fecal matter of the civet cat, commonly found in parts of Africa and Asia. The civet only eats the finest and most ripened coffee cherries, but it doesn't digest the bean. For some coffee lovers, Kopi Luwak is heaven in a cup. And I've gotta say, I love a nice cup of specialty coffee just like anyone else, but you couldn't pay me enough to drink a hot cup of Kopi Luwak. In addition to the world's most expensive coffee, there's something else that Bali's known for. It's unique beaches. When most of us think about the image of a tropical paradise in our minds, we envision white sand beaches and pristine turquoise blue waters. While you're tripping around Bali, you'll see a number of stunning beaches spread out around the island, but some of their beaches have black sand instead of white. For instance, the uber-popular Lovina Beach is covered in black sand born from the cooled lava of the Mount Agung volcano. Even though Lovina Beach looks different than what you'd see on your standard tropical postcard, it is a must-see. What do you think? Are you in the mood for a nice black sand beach and a warm cup of of Kopi Luwak? We'd love to know your thoughts, so drop some comments down below. Next, is tourism a big part of Bali's economy? You bet. To say that tourism is a big part of Bali's economy would actually be an understatement. Tourism in Bali isn't big, it's massive. Due to the fact that Bali is such a popular tourist destination for travelers around the world, at least 80% of Bali's economy is related to tourism. This ranges from leisure activities to hotels to restaurants. In terms of national income, tourism is the country's largest industry. With January 1st right around the corner, you might be thinking about heading to some place that's hot and sunny to ring in the new year and get crazy, get wild, and get loud. But if that's the case, you might want to think about an alternate destination. Why? Because believe it or not, the Balinese New Year starts in silence. Yep, true story. In Bali on January 1st, the first day of the new calendar is called Niepi, and no one is allowed on the streets. Laws state that all noise and light are to be kept at a minimum, and these rules apply to everyone who is on the island. And of course, that includes you. Another thing to keep in mind is that there are a lot of different languages languages and dialects spoken all over Indonesia. Bahasa Indonesian is the country's official language, but most Balinese residents speak three languages, Balinese, Indonesian, and English. Most residents will make an effort to learn English, particularly younger generations, in order to increase their chances of finding employment opportunities and success in the travel and tourism sector. Up next, are Balinese babies considered little angels? Absolutely. I think every culture probably feels that their society's youngest members are little angels. Well, maybe not the ancient Spartans, but to Balinese Balinese people, babies are certainly viewed as little angels. In fact, in Bali, babies are carried everywhere during the first few months of their lives because they are not allowed to touch the ground. And in Balinese culture, it is believed that babies are connected to spirits, and in order to maintain this connection, they must not touch the earth. When the time comes, they are allowed to touch the ground, and a big ceremony is held in honor of this transition. The Balinese hold other rite of passage type ceremonies as well. For instance, when a Balinese child reaches puberty, there is a tooth filing ceremony that symbolizes three very important stages of life, a coming of age, the transition from animal to human, and the control of the six human evils. Naturally, you're probably wondering what these six human evils are, so here goes. According to the Balinese people, the six human evils are lust, greed, wrath, pride, jealousy, and intoxication. These negative traits are universal, and most people in the West would probably agree that they're problematic as well. Stay tuned and don't go away as we continue revealing fun facts you should know about Bali, Indonesia. Next up, speaking of babies, do the Balinese people have a unique method for naming their children? We're about to find out. In Western cultures, parents can spend oodles of time thinking about baby names. I'm not talking days or weeks, but months and even years. In Bali, however, parents have a much simpler method for naming their progeny. If you ever visit Bali, you might notice that a lot of people are called Wayan, Maid, Neoman, or Ketut. The reason is simple. You see, most Balinese people are given one of these four names, whether they be male or female. The names mean firstborn, secondborn, thirdborn, and fourthborn. Some of you might be asking, well, what would parents call their fifth or sixth child? In this case, the parents would simply start over again and name him or her Wayan again, and so on and so forth. As you can see, the Balinese people are busy making babies on land, but there are also millions of births taking place under the sea. Did you know that Indonesian waters are home to more than 3,000 species of fish? Yep, true story. And believe it or not, that's double the number of species found in Australia's Great Barrier Reef. So cool! If you're looking to discover a place with a fascinating culture, breathtaking landscape, and incredible marine 
life, Bali is the place for you. At this point, I only have one question for you. Are you ready to come to paradise? Up next, why do Balinese people celebrate with Penor? Let's find out. Before we dive into why the Balinese celebrate with Penor, it would probably be best to first explain what it is. Outside of Balinese homes and other structures such as shrines, you may notice tall cut bamboo that's been decorated with various trinkets. This is known as the practice of Penor. Why do they do it? These are offerings to the gods which symbolize victory over evil. If you head to Bali, don't be surprised if you see these all over the place. And sometimes, these displays can be up to 10 meters high. Another fun fact about Bali is that the island is home to long-tailed macaques. And while they may seem super adorable, if you're ever around them, be sure to hold on to your cell phone, wallet, and especially your food, because they won't hesitate to take these items and run off into the jungle faster than you can say paradise. Bali's famous Uluwatu Temple is a magical place where you can definitely see the long-tailed macaques, but they're generally spread out across the entire island as well. The Balinese word for these adorable kleptomaniacs is monyet. Another place to see them is in Bali's Ubud Monkey Forest. In fact, you'll find more than 700 of them there. But as I said, hold on to your belongings, otherwise you might find yourself running through the jungle chasing after a monkey who just stole your brand new iPhone. And I don't know about you, but I do not run well in flip-flops. Next up, what do we know about the history of Bali? You're about to find out. Bali was once a part of the Dutch East India Company. After the company moved to Indonesia several hundred years ago, but the official colony of the Dutch East Indies wasn't founded until 1816. Bali didn't become a part of it until 1906, after the country was invaded by the Dutch. According to historian, despite the Dutch invasion, Bali managed to retain a great deal of local autonomy and control compared to other regions of Indonesia. Unfortunately, however, the Dutch weren't the only ones to invade Indonesia. Not long after the Dutch invaded, the Empire of Japan invaded and occupied Bali during the Second World War. Initially, Indonesia actually welcomed the Japanese when they invaded in 1942, hoping that they would be liberated from the Dutch and finally have their independence. But sadly, their dreams of freedom and independence were short-lived, and the Japanese turned out to be much more brutal and harsher than their Dutch rulers. Within days of Japan's surrender in 1945, Indonesia finally declared its independence. But their hopes and dreams of freedom didn't last long, as the Dutch soon returned and again seized control. I love history and can talk about the subject all day long, but due to time constraints, we're going to have to cut this Balinese history lesson a little short. Fortunately, though, we've been able to provide you with the basics. Finally, when in Rome, should you do as the Romans do? There's an old expression that says, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. What it means is, when visiting a foreign land, follow the customs of those who live in it. For the most part, I wholeheartedly agree with this tidbit of advice, but of course there are exceptions. And at least in Bali, consuming Arak would fall into the exceptions category. Arak is Bali's local moonshine, and I know some of you might be saying, did someone just say moonshine? Count me in, <laughs> but not so fast. You see, this local moonshine can kill you. It's a liquor that is typically homemade, and it's a sweet wine made from coconut palm flour. The tax on alcohol in Bali is really high, so in some local bars, they often use homemade stuff. Sometimes Arak is fine, but if it's a bad batch, you can end up with a lethal case of methanol poisoning. Obviously, that's no laughing matter. Having the time of your life in paradise shouldn't cost you your life. That's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great videos.